what's up YouTube fam so didn't do much work on the bibster this week uh, actually was caught up in Atlanta over the weekend and had a lot going on I did do some stuff in the shop and I'm about to show you and I've got some new parts for this thing that I'm about to show you but not really in progress I know I'm probably disappointed so one of the things I did do was uh, try to get organized in the shop Part of that was getting all the molly off the floor so this wall that you've seen me make in the past made a uh, kind of a frame for it and I just didn't want to make a normal steel frame so I made it out of some old hardwood so I try really hard not to be like a pack rat like keep everything but I do keep a lot of stuff that I feel like I could use one day that'd be cool and this hardwood is one of those so this was actually stuff that um, came from metal supermarkets. Uh, when I ordered my sheet metal, they make pallets out of this stuff, and so I'd just kind of hang on to it, disassemble those things and hang on to it. And it's, I don't know what kind of hardwood it is, but it is super, super tough. I mean, it was hard to even drill into it. Anyway, uh, it's kind of cool. It's, it's got the feel that I want, for sure. One little problem, though, is that I need to make some kind of retainers for the ends of these. Uh, I mean, the tubing's not going anywhere now, but as I kind of mess with this tubing in the future, um, there's always that chance that one piece goes rolling off or whatever. So I want to make some cool retainers, but I didn't, I didn't want to just do anything. So I was trying to come up with some ideas. I actually posted some stuff on, on Instagram asking for some ideas. So now I'm going to play with some of those ideas that I had thought about and get your opinion on what you think. Or if you have your own ideas of what needs to go here. Like in my eyes, I see like um, some kind of like sprocket or something out of a transmission. Just something cool, but I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like gaudy. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want it to be over the top. Um, so anyway. So the first thing I thought about was using some chains. I've got a bunch of different kind of chains over here um thought about even using some hooks i just don't i don't exactly know a perfect idea with it how to kind of orientate orient orient it where it doesn't look like it was an afterthought but my idea on the chain was maybe use three links so you could have like two links to mount it and then have one just hanging up or I could like tack weld it. I guess I could do just two links. I don't know, let's uh, cut some of this stuff apart and make a couple different ideas and then we'll put them up and see what it looks like. So for you, for those of you that follow me on other forms of social media other than YouTube. Probably seen that I put the fab cab up for sale. Uh, really need a tow rig. And the fab cab, it, it, it'll get up and move. It's a, it's a great little, it's a hot rod. It would probably haul like an open car trailer. Um, with Caliente on it or something, but I really need like a diesel truck, like a dedicated tow rig to kind of travel around. So, don't need two dualies. So I put it up for sale. So, stuff's not the cleanest, so it's probably not going to be the best thing to weld. But, I'm going to give it a shot.
toasty still. Ooh, especially that one. That is the one thing that's super rad about <clears throat> having welders and all kinds of rad tools is that if you want to make something, just make it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to wait on nobody. You ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. It takes time to get there. You got to build up, obviously, the amount of tools you got. And just because you have the tools doesn't mean you're going to be able to use them. But you'll figure that out. So anyway, I was kind of thinking like maybe something like that. And uh, maybe do like a... I'll weld some like maybe washers on the back side and put... Let's see. So I got some of these too. So like I could maybe drill. Oh, those things are too shiny. Maybe something similar to that. Mm. Or, think about just having like one sole piece. Or I could double them up, I guess. I used to work in the corporate world. I used to tell my employees all the time, it's not, uh, it's not what you do, but it's how you do it. So a prime example of that would be like, if you were in sales, if you were in sales, it wouldn't be how many you sold, but how you sold those, because you could sell the most amount of units, whatever that might be, but if you like make every customer hate you or not want to do business with you again or whatever the case may be, you just defeated the purpose of, of what you were doing to begin with. So it's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's kind of a mantra that you should carry out throughout your life. And, and like what I'm doing here is a prime example of that. It's not what I'm doing, it's not building a rack. Could have done that out of steel. It'd been just like every other rack. It's how I'm doing it. It's gonna make the difference. So obviously, still gotta work through some things, but you just kind of keep that in mind. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Let's uh, let's take and fasten this thing up here temporarily somehow. So it feels like a pretty good start. Um, doesn't really feel substantial enough though. It's like there's too much, too much wood showing down here. I almost need to like weld two more links on the bottom. Maybe have those links fastened on. Switch them out and see what this one looks like. That one doesn't look as bad, especially if I had like a big rusty, rusty screw or whatever the hell that thing is. What is that? Lag bolt? Big rusty lag bolt in there. All right, so this is what we're gonna do, because I can't make up my mind. So that's one. I want y'all to vote in the comments. Do you like idea number one? Okay. Idea number two would be 
something like that. Actually, probably be just a little bit lower, but yeah, centered. Some kind of mounting hardware right there in the center. Three would be like two of these things. Maybe like that and like that. That's idea number three. And then four would be like this, but maybe add a link in the center to mount it. Or maybe a link on each side. Or option number five, none of the above. We'll come back to that. You let me know what you think. Give me what option you think is the best. I really like the chain link idea and I've got a bunch of that stuff laying over here already. Or if you have another idea that you just feel like I have to know, put that in the comments as well. And uh, I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe there's another idea that I need to do or I need to try. I've already got the horseshoe idea. If you want horseshoes on there, I've got the railroad ties, not ties, the railroad tie stakes. Got that idea, which I think that's a cool idea. I just don't have any. So I have to hunt and see what I could find because those things may not be a bad idea as well. So if you have anything else, let me know. And let's vote on these as well. All right, let's talk about this thing. So ponies and the Smokies, I'd really like to have this thing going up and down by itself uh, with the hydraulic ride. Uh, if you haven't seen, because it's been, for, been a while since I did any recap on it. Hydraulic cylinders up front, they're going to work like struts. going to have lines that come out and will eventually run to these, what are called accumulators. So this is a steel uh, section up here. It's got a bladder in there, and then it's filled with gas on the top, nitrogen. And so as the hydraulic fluid travels through this section, so it's got like a inlet and an outlet. As the hydraulic travels through this on its way to the pump, this bladder in here will actually give. So it will very much act like a spring. And then just the hydraulic fluid itself traveling is the dampening effect, it's the shock. So essentially, that's all I need. I don't need a spring, I don't need a shock. All I need is a hydraulic cylinder and an accumulator. Now it's not the world's best solution, otherwise you'd see these on all kinds of cars, but for something like this, it's a perfect solution. So that's how it's gonna control the front. Line will come off, run down the chassis on both sides. I've got swivel fittings that'll go on the bottom of those uh, cylinders, which will allow you to turn, and it won't you know, bind the lines. Those will go back to the Accumulators, which will be somewhere in here. Gonna do a pump in the rear, and then the rear section is basically the same hydraulic cylinder in the back. It just ties into uh, that piece right here. Can't really see it, but it's just a big cantilever. It's just a big lever, that's all it is. So it raises up the other side, pushes down on this side, and essentially raises the car up and it just rides on coilover shocks. So it has standard ride at the back. It's just adjusted by hydraulic. So all that explaining because to start putting this thing together, I needed to figure out the hydraulic pump setup that I was gonna use on it. I looked at a lot of the hoppy hoppy hydraulic stuff. Um, which would be a perfect scenario, except for that those pumps are awfully large and they're large because they can move a lot of fluid really fast, which is how you get those cars to move really fast. Well, I don't need this thing to move fast. Matter of fact, I don't want it to move fast. I want it to be slow. When you hit the switches on this thing, I want it to slowly raise up. And when you drop it, I want it to slowly drop. I don't want it to like crash down. So there's two things that kind of Control those, the, the way that it comes down will be restrictors. You're basically restricting how the fluid travels back into the tank. <clears throat> Coming up, it's the pump itself. And so there's a lot of options on pumps. And as a matter of fact, you can go a smaller pump, which really is what I need for this thing because I don't have that much space. I uh, didn't really know how I wanted to address that. I looked at a bunch of different options. 
Some of them were ultra expensive. I looked at multi multiple pump setups. Um, and what I came up with was a pump that's used on a, like a dump trailer or a lift gate on the back of a truck or one of those type of things, just a standard pump. Well, let me show you. So the idea for this thing was I looked at a bunch of different pumps. Some of them had metal tanks, which would have worked perfect for me because even though they were really long, I could have modified them and made them taller or whatever I needed to do uh, in order to make it fit. This particular setup actually was already really close to the right size. And so I was like, well, I'll just take my chances with this one. And then worst case, uh, I'll build my own steel tank to do what I need it to do. The good thing about the Bibster is that it's not gonna need that much fluid. So it doesn't have really huge hydraulic cylinders. They're gonna take a lot of fluid. And so I didn't need to really need a big tank. I mean, once the system's already full and then you fill this thing up, um, you know, to raise the entire bib strip, it's not gonna use you know, maybe a quart or two. I think this is like a five quart unit. So on hydraulic setups that cars usually use, um, usually what happens is you have a pump and the pump is by itself. And then you have solenoids that actually uh, open and close to m allow fluid to move in certain directions or, or to, well, basically just allow fluid to move in certain directions, whether that's going to the cylinders or returning back to the tank. I took a chance and bought a double acting setup. So the way this thing is designed to work is a double acting cylinder, which means if you have a cylinder, it has two ports on it versus just one port in the bottom. And so the cylinder can push and pull. Uh, the cylinders on the Bibster can only push. They're gonna push up and then gravity should push it back down. So this is technically not the right setup for what I'm gonna be doing on the Bibster, but I was hoping that I could like rewire it and have these you know one work the front and one work the rear all built into one unit so i don't know that that's going to be able to work but we'll kind of play with it and see i don't know i'll figure it out i've got a pretty good idea of how it should work i would think that when it opens one it pumps fluid out but it also allows fluid from the other side of the cylinder to drain back in, which I'm assuming drains back in on the other side. So it must have some kind of check valves in there. And then when you want to reverse it, pumps out this side and the other side allows it to drain back in, which I don't want it draining back in. So I may have to actually add some check valves of my own on the exterior lines with some solenoids to control the drain back. I don't know. I'll have to play with it and see. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. So I mentioned it before, I can work on the firewall very soon. Hopefully maybe next week I'll have that video for you guys. Kind of got tied up this week, didn't get that done. Firewall, man, this seems to look sweet. And then we'll work on the roof. And I've also been thinking about the, the intake. So I had a buddy of mine over here this week and uh, I was kind of talking about the car with him. And I told him I was gonna do this in carbon, which has always been the plan. Because I was going to tie this, I was going to do carbon seats, I was going to possibly do a carbon roof, I was going to do carbon panels on the firewall. The only problem is, is that the more stuff I do out of aluminum, the more I like it the way it is. Like the seats, I don't think I'm going to go back and do those in carbon, I think I'm just going to leave them in aluminum. Once I clean those up and scuff them and stuff, they're going to be fantabulous. Uh, not gonna do carbon stuff on the fire on the uh, 
tunnel, I don't think, because I love the way the aluminum looks. So he had kind of mentioned that this intake would be out of place if it was carbon, which I now agree that that's probably the case. So I'm thinking about doing it out of 100% aluminum. Uh, it'll kind of match everything else that's going on in this thing. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. The good thing is about it is I'm always going to do, I've all, I was always going to do an aluminum lower. So technically I could do an aluminum and a carbon upper and then just switch them out based on, you know, how I feel about it. So you can see it's gonna be bare metal front to back. So I mean, when you look at it with the aluminum valve covers and the aluminum induction tubing, an aluminum intake would kind of make sense. So he's got me thinking. Decisions, decisions, I gotta figure that out and I gotta figure it out fast. Well, I can always change my mind, but I gotta figure it out before Pony wanna kinda of have that stuff sorted out. So anyway, no fabrication this week. Just kind of catching up on some odds and ends stuff. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next Friday. Do work, son.